Hangout. Was it a concert? Yeah, the Holiday Hangout. Oh, is it in Akron, that one? Yes. Oh, it was, yeah. Um, it was very cool. Um, a few of our past guests, right? Yeah. Uh, it was a great show. The Lava Brothers are so freaking good. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody there put on a great show. It was like, totally professionally done. Um, what's his name? Ryan. Uh, Humbert. Yeah, right. Yeah, he uh, he was running the whole thing. So he told me to say hi, but oh. he was he was running the whole thing the whole time. Um, <laughs> well, we're gonna try to get him in here next year. Yeah. Uh, Shelby Olive was like in between acts. I don't know if you've ever heard of her or mm-hmm. seen her, but uh, she just did a solo thing and she Shelby was doing. Um, like she was playing guitar like a righty guitar, left handed, like just oh. upside down, and was playing like that. And just. Oh. She was awesome, man. In between every act, she came out and would do like ten minutes while they set up the next band. Oh, that's and, neat. I mean, it was it nice. was fantastic. Oh, nice, cool. Was it? Is that one of the snowy days or no? It snowed while we were in there. We came outside yeah. from the holiday concert to snow. It was <laughs> pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like everybody was was excellent there. Um, and I was like the youngest person in the crowd, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was kind of weird. I yeah. wasn't expecting that when I got there. I'm used to going to these like original act shows and being the old man. You yeah. Know? <laughs> cool. How you doing, Dennis? Oh, doing good. Man, oh, hey, we're uh, do we're intro? doing a podcast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. I was waiting on you. You know. Cool. Welcome back to Cuyahoga Sound Podcast, and I'm Evan Stone. I'm Chuck Schilling. We have Dennis Davis with us today. <laughs> now we, uh, I met both these guys on the same day in my basement. Same day? No, no, no. no that's was, not right. It's yeah. not that's right. That's not right at all. <laughs> You're cut a that, liar. Cut that, take that. It's a phony. Take two. Take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> the same band. The same band. But yes. Not the same day. Yeah. Cool. Dennis plays guitar in Bad Juju. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Nineties so, tribute band, right? Yeah, nineties tribute. Um, throw in some 80s um, we do like landslide every now and then um, nice. but yeah uh, mostly uh, 90s cool yeah cool so you guys were part of that music awards program this yeah. past uh, month right? yeah we won best tribute band uh, not tribute band cover band I think um, so yeah it was pretty exciting um, first time they ever did the awards it was solely mm-hmm. based on votes so yeah. this you know little asterisk I think next to Everything that happens with an award show, it's like that. Mm-hmm. But it was it was neat. It's gotten us some mileage. You know, there's some people who recognize it. We've got some few bookings from uh, places that are, you know, oh, I heard you from the awards. So I don't know if they'll do it again. But um, yeah, it was neat. Went to the awards ceremony, and it's funny when you go there, you don't realize how much different music there is in Cleveland. Like I'm so trapped in my world of. Did you go to the ceremony? Yeah. Cool. And uh, they opened the whole thing with, like, this brass band, like Cleveland Brass Band or something. And they had, like, a tuba with, like, an SM58 shoved into the horn. <laughs> and uh, and then this woman got up and she rapped. And then there was this country band. And they were all dressed the same. And, like, damn, this is all Cleveland stuff. So that was kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's going good. Been in two and a half years. Um, they had quite a few people come and go. Chuck was our drummer for a little bit, you know. And <laughs> like any typical band, a bit of a revolving door at times. Cool. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be playing bass with you this Saturday. Yeah, second time he's <laughs> playing bass. Oh, yeah. Cool. At the, uh, oh, no, not the same place, but Time Warp and now my yeah. corner bar. New yeah. Year's Eve. For New Year's Eve, yeah. yeah this is actually my first New Year's Eve gig, and I'm doing it on bass instead of drums. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of strange. It's, it's, it's funny to but. see you over there because this will be the third time we played uh, with you on bass. Yeah. Uh, not for Juju, but, you know, we did the Rock Bottom show. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the guys are really excited to have you there. So I, Yeah, it's always a good time. Absolutely. You guys, you guys bring a great crowd. Um, like I mean, I, I was telling Evan the last time I went out um, and filled in with you guys um, at uh, Time Warp, you know, like third set. Normally it's a ghost town for cover bands here, and it was packed from, yeah. from the first chord until till we're wrapping up chords at the end. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like first, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Coin yeah. that phrase. Yeah, that was not pretty. Did you steal it? No, 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 nice off the cusp. Mm-hmm. That That's was right. great. I'm sure somebody said it beautiful. before, but you, 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 know? said, you said it now. <laughs> but now I have. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're real lucky to have the following we do, and um, you know we've made a lot of progress since I've started with the band. With opening up at Rock the River and Morning Amphitheater, and we're playing the Palace Theater again for the third or fourth time, cool. February third, nice. uh, which is 
exciting. A lot of things that I always wanted to do, I, I got to do in the band, which is silly stuff like the Parma Pit stop. I want to play there. You know, it's this little hole in the wall. I got to play there, you know, and yeah. so that's kind of fun. Legends was another one on my list, Time Warp. So. Yeah, you get the local the local legends of, like, the Cleveland cover scene. You want to play all those places. Yeah, so. and having been in a band where I was trying to book, like when I was trying to book our Chili Peppers tribute, I was hitting all these places and not getting anywhere. And then, yeah, you finally get to get in and see it and then of course at the end of it, it's like well okay that was that you know i don't know why i was so hung up on that it was still great but it's just kind of <laughs> funny how you build it up in your head you know i feel that way about house of blues i haven't played like the main stage of house of blues yet yeah me either yeah and that's I, like one I that i want to play the other two two rooms the foundation room and yeah, the cambridge room. room yeah, yeah. Foundation Room's sweet. Oh. They, they put a lot of they're putting a lot of new acts up there yeah and it's like funky and electronic and yeah. rock and, wow. and like jam it's a party up there yeah um they'll have, they'll bring a big band on the stage and then they'll have like a pre and post band right there uh, yeah. up there it's pretty cool yeah i've done a couple of those that and then like a beer tasting thing where they have a band out on the main stage and then they'll mm-hmm. have like different acts going on in the side stages yeah it's like always cool neat. jameson ball bartender's ball they used to have there and uh, yeah, there'd that. always be uh, I think Tricky Dick was the the band. Tricky Dick and Old School. Mm. This was like 2016 or 15. So yeah, whoever Go was back. was big band. Yeah, band. those two right. were up for Disco. sure. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, you glanced over it, but we well, you met Dennis through us all being in a Red Hot Chili Peppers oh, band together. Right. Yeah, but you guys, you guys have been playing together longer before that, right? Yeah, I was trying to think about it today, 2014? Probably around there. Maybe. Yeah, 13 We're, or 14. Yeah. And it was also a Craigslist ad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, on vacation. Men seeking men like us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, which they don't have anymore, so that's why. That's, um, but I was in Virginia Beach on vacation, and I get a call from the lead singer of the band we were in at the time, a Journey tribute. And he's like, you know, uh, we need a new drummer and I found this guy and I was like, okay. And it was basically no audition. Chuck was just in the band. Um, so yeah, we did like a year of journey and then we did like an original project with the same group of people for a year. And then we did a Southern rock tribute for a while. And then we kind of had some issues with that (laughs) and, uh, (laughs) did our own thing, which Chuck really spearheaded. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've played in so many bands together, Yeah, you know, and we have so such a similar background with, you know, the dads who played and, and we, you know, had the same experience growing up like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, not to get soppy or whatever, but, you know, <laughs> it's a hell of a thing to meet people that you have a similar background you've been with for years and different projects. It's pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. So, like, so we um, we got put together for the uh, Chili Peppers band answering the Craigslist ad, and right. then the singer who put it all together bailed on us because yeah. <laughs> he was moving to Vegas, like, right afterwards. And um, I was playing with Dennis, and we were at Moon Man at that point in time, right? Yep. Moon Man TV. Yep. Um, and I'm, you know, just telling those guys, cause we were just starting out. So we didn't have a ton of gigs, saw the chili peppers thing. I was like, well, this is fun. Mm-hmm. And then letting these guys know, well, it's kind of fizzled out. The singer left, you know, and Dennis who was playing guitar on that band, uh, in moon man was yeah. like, well, yeah. I'll sing. You, you, can, can I audition? And I'm like, yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's his, you know, he's not singing with bad juju besides backing vocals in a right. couple songs. Uh, yep. We yeah. auditioned a couple bad singers before you. We too. did. Yeah. I know yeah. there was a guy before me. I remember yeah. waiting up. Up on the porch. Yeah, and stuff. That was, oh really? Oh, that yeah. was the, that same day. That's funny. That, yeah. was, that was a rough one. That first one. Oh man. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, nailed it and got it and yeah. Yeah, that was weird. Just the idea of being a lead singer. Like uh, I still remember being in the basement at your house, and you guys would be working on music stuff, and I'd just be kind of like, you know. What are, yeah. You know, just waiting for you guys to get whatever you need to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, that's got to be being, very odd. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to being the guy, you know, with the guitar on and stuff. So that was. A hell of an experience. I, I mean, I, I appreciate the hell you guys let me try it because um, I think I learned a lot about myself and what it takes to be a singer. I, I don't care what anyone says. Singer's the hardest position in the band. I mean, it's night in, night out to keep that going with the same timber and not ruin your voice. It's a lot more discipline, I think, than playing the stuff I played in the past. So I had mad respect for singers after that. I'll cut that part out so Chad doesn't hear it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you change your um, like practice routine, like to add vocal <clears throat> warm ups and oh, yeah. singing the vocals, like rather than just practicing the songs, like tuning that instrument, mm-hmm. take some work, huh? Oh, absolutely. I um, I think when we were a Moon Man, 
I got a hold of a like an internet series that was supposed to help you be, become a better singer, and I learned a bunch of stuff from that. I mean, there's things that you do, and you're like, oh, I'll just sing the song. There's ways to pronounce vowels that makes it easier to sing. So you don't say, like, E is a very hard vowel to sing because it actually closes up. Your, your tongue wants to go up. So the whole idea is to keep your tongue flat and keep your throat open. Um, so you say, eh, instead, but you kind of change it a little bit. So I, I got into some of that. Always vocal warm-ups, like Chad and Bad Juju, he... Uh, he always takes off for 10 minutes before the gig. Uh, you, he just disappears because he's doing vocal warm-ups. And he, one of the ones he does is a, a cat meow. And so like, meow, meow. He'll do that over and over again. And that's supposed to help get things ready, cool. which is strange. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> constantly in the car, singing the tunes. I had a whole Chili Peppers track, you know, or playlist that I would uh, mm-hmm. sing along to. So a lot of practice. Keep, getting your voice, um, keeping it loose all the time was like the key for me. You know, I, I can't go a few days without singing. Otherwise, I'm starting over. So, oh, yeah, but very different for sure. Was it harder prepping for the vocals mm. or for getting rid of all that body hair? Yes. The, the prep. <laughs> <laughs> you might not know about this. Um, yes, the, the prep for the show was, was rough, and it involved me and my wife. So, um, you know, I'm hairy top to bottom, shoulders, back, sides, the whole thing. So to be Gorilla like, Monsoon. Yes. <laughs> so to be uh, Anthony Kiedis, I, I, yeah, it was like clip it down, shave it. I'd, I'd stand in the shower like this while she was, you know, scraping off the barnacles. Um, <laughs> so when we stopped and I could let it grow back, that was probably worse than the prep because it's just, it's itchy. And it's not yeah. like one day it's itchy. It's like four or five days it's itchy. Um, but yeah, Chad actually found pictures of me dressed up as Anthony Kiedis with the wig, and he's making shirts. You know, he's, he likes to make fun of it. And stuff. Yeah. He's made a shirt of you. Yes. Yeah. As a picture of me, I think like, you know, I don't know, mid vocal or something, but yeah, pretty fun. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, it was great. Doing the chili pepper thing with you guys was awesome. All right. Yeah. Cool. We, we should have brought Chris here, too. We could have had a full-fledged reunion. Uh, yeah, we should yeah. definitely do that. Let's call we'll definitely him do it in the future. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get him on the... I was, let's at least have a practice. Maybe we'll play again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we could hope for f- bad have, juju. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be fine. They have, uh, like, five new albums. <laughs> exactly, yeah. They've, they've done a few things since uh, we stopped. Yeah. But I ran into Chris um, at our first Rock on the River. We were open up for a foreigner tribute. And in the heat of the moment, I, I took my shirt off. You know, rock and roll, it's hot, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I didn't know he was in the crowd because he knew the lead singer of the Foreigner band. And he's like, dude, you just can't keep your shirt on because everything we played in Chili Peppers eventually, <laughs> yeah. you know, was bare chest and stuff. So but he's a good guy. I took his, um, well, I half took his position in Billy Like Soda after oh, yeah. he was, uh, after he quit that there. This guy Cody filled in and then, like, mm-hmm. I was filling in. Then I started playing a lot more, and I can't I can't do that again for music that I don't like. It's you know? really it rough was, to play. It was songs. rough playing that, that like yeah. twice a weekend, sort of weekend after weekend. Yeah. yeah, it's a serious grind. We were so last year. I've I've been in you know with Chuck some pretty good money making tribute bands, and we played so much last year that I kind of blew any total I had before out of the water. And we were, oh, I mean. <laughs> if it wasn't every weekend, it was like some weekdays in between, and it was just relentless. Yeah, and I don't care what music you're playing. After a while, it, it gets a little tedious, and yeah, and if you don't like the music to begin with, it's are there story s- over. songs that have lost the, their uh, your love? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm kind of from the school. I enjoy playing music that people want to hear, so I could play the same song kind of over and over again as long as people are getting into it. I'm not too bad, but like uh, we open every show just about every show with Machine Head. I kind of had my fill of Machine Head, you know. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I know where it's going to go. and um, But, you know, there's been songs in the past, like Wonderful Tonight. Um, I always think about that one because I think the first time I played it or heard it, I was almost wanting to cry. I was like, that's the most beautiful song. And then when you're playing it at the American Legion in Akron on a Saturday night to 80-year-olds, you're like, okay, I don't like this song anymore. This yeah. is, yeah, getting a little old. So. But, yeah, I mean, Juju... We play so much. I think I'm kind of immune to it. I just kind of know what we're going to do. We're adding a lot more songs now, but um, Machine Head sticks out to me more than any of them because I don't know why. It's the first one. It's the first one. It's a guaranteed we're going to play it, yeah. Yeah, it's like those and the sound check songs are the same thing. Yeah, we do uh, talk dirty to me for sound check, and it's like, okay, you know, (laughs) do half of it and stop and do some more. (laughs) 
I, I, I couldn't do that song anymore. Like th- that, that was one of the ones that was uh, like r- really mm. dragging me down. Yeah. Which one yeah. was that? Talk dirty. Talk to dirty. Me? To me. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't really know '80s music. Right. At all. And um, they were like, I remember when I first was like, what is it? What's this song? And they were looking at me like I was crazy. I'm, <laughs> I'm only like five years younger than you. you know? Yeah. Or like yeah. five years younger than the guys in uh, Billy Like Soda, too. But mm-hmm. like, there was so much, so much 80s that I didn't know that I had to learn that I'm I, like, I already hate this song. And now I got to learn how to play it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For like what seems like good money, but you know, in the th- the scheme of things, like how much time it took to like get this ready, like it w- wasn't worth it to me anymore because mm-hmm. I wasn't getting any joy out of it. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I mean, we we make money playing. Sometimes you're lucky enough to make a little more than what you spend on equipment and the time it takes to to do that, but. Yeah, at the end of the day, you got to enjoy it, especially if you're doing covers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing to be original and, like, I'm going to try and make this my life mission. But, yeah, that, that's why it's, it's hard to keep all those people in the same band for years and years. I don't know how the guys in Disco Inferno do it, you know, or 1988. I think they probably had some changes. But not only are you doing the same songs that, you know, you can't even add songs. You know, they only had so many disco songs, you know, and <laughs> so many <laughs> right? 80s yeah. metal songs. So, you know, eventually... And, and those guys dress, I don't know how they do it. Like, just doing the Chili Pepper stuff was a little bit of a drag, but to be a Kiss tribute. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of, oh, the Kiss tribute. In August, <laughs> yeah. we opened up for uh, Strutter twice, and I remember being backstage at Warren, and he's about ready to go on, and he's full Gene Simmons. You know, he's got the cigarette. I'm like, dude, you look amazing. He's like, yeah, whatever. You know, he goes out there, <laughs> and he, it's just, I don't know how that makeup stays on. But yeah. the funniest thing I ever saw was uh, Mr. Speed. We played a uh, joint show with them. I don't know if you're in the band then or I not. I was not. You told me about okay. it, though. Yeah, it was right so, before I joined. All right, yeah. So we played in the middle of, like, the um, uh, grandstand, and they had, like, this gravel going around for, I don't know, slot cars or something like that. And after they were done with their show, like, we opened, and then the Kiss tribute came on. They had to go down to the merch tent to uh, sell their shit. So <laughs> here's Gene Simmons in these big dragon boots, walking like a woman in heels for the first time, trying to get to the merch tent. Um so, yeah, I, I can't imagine. Plus, those guys, I saw what they went into to put the makeup on. And they, first, you just set up. You're sweating. And now you got to try and dry yourself. And he's got the makeup mirror, and he's doing this. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not into that. So yeah. I did a tiny bit of makeup with the Motley Crue trick. Yeah. And that was enough. Some eyeliner, you know. <laughs> yeah, and a couple it. stripes on my, on my cheek. And I was <laughs> I was good to go with that. Some fake tattoos, too. Oh, which yeah. fake tattoos have come a long way. Mm-hmm. Like, they are much better than they were when I was little. Yeah. Like, they'll last for a long time. You do a full sleeve really easily. <laughs> Yeah. I feel dumb just complaining about having to just wear a wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think my days of, of trying to do that stuff are, are behind me, you know, wigs or makeup or, you know. Yeah. I just bought, like, some clothes today for Bad Juju, just try to dress it up a little bit, and that was not too bad. But, um, but yeah, I mean, some of these guys with their costumes and the stuff they have to lug around and do night after night, I don't know how they keep it going because I think most of us would be bored within yeah. a couple months. So, they But must, the money must be good. Really? Or the, yeah. Or the money. Or really love it. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we saw Disco Inferno once, and their crowd was amazing. Everyone's having a great time. I could get mm-hmm. addicted to that, probably. That might be worth it to see the crowd have so much fun. They have their own little community, like group of they people really that do. all know each other, huh? I think so. It, yeah, yeah, we went and saw them just some random Saturday night, like mm-hmm. in Lakewood or something. Yeah, Vosh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, at Vosh. It was just as packed as packed could be. We barely moved in there. We're like, all right, well. Yeah. Apparently was... people don't care about backing track. <laughs> oh. I, I worked with a woman. I probably told you this story. She thought they were the best band ever. And I was like, well, you realize that they lose, use a lot of backing tracks. She's like, really? I'm like, well, yeah. Like, they do ABBA. They have women singing in the background. She's like, I never really thought about it. So I think the way, you know, most people are kind of <laughs> silly. Yeah. They're, they're kind of... Uh, for lack of a better word, stupid when it comes to music stuff because they just see people playing they just assume it's all there. So mm-hmm. most people that go listen to music aren't like us. You know, They don't know yeah. how music's made and what should be there isn't there. So. Just going to that show had a huge influence on us putting Moon Man to, oh uh, together, God. Moon Man TV, because we're like, all right, we can do all these 80s songs just as a four-piece. Mm-hmm. If, you know, like we need a female vocalist that can play guitar some, and, you know, yeah, Heidi, Heidi was fantastic with Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. But the keys were in there, and, uh, yeah, like nobody cared. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody know. nobody cares about about the backing track thing except for uh, other musicians and that's right. Yeah. They're going to frown upon you anyways if they're in a bad mood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there there are some holdouts out there that really want a true band. We played a uh, Christmas show in Little Italy and the guy there was like I would never hire Disco Inferno. I was like they're all backing tracks. I'm not going to hire that. Uh, and then the woman that we that we know who knows everybody, she's like everyone used backing tracks. You know, all the big bands use it, and she seemed a little uh, discon well, whatever, concerned with that. Like you know, it's kind of not the true experience. But but I don't know. I don't have much problem with it. Yeah. Well, it's and with it sounds perfect when you use those. You know, people like perfect sounding music, I guess, or as close to it as mm-hmm. as the song they know. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. the ones buying the booze and. Paying for the, the bands and yeah. that's yeah. who's gonna get the yeah. Yeah. the gigs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Less people to cut into that cash too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's right. Yeah. I don't need seven synth players. Who players is it? Uh, uh, that's right. Um, Unky a few episodes ago, like yeah, no, no live drummer anymore. Just use the yeah. eight oh eight. We got a box. <laughs> yeah. right. And they just yeah. One less person. As a drummer, I'm ashamed that I love the sound of an eight oh eight. They sound so cool. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I should have peed when I got here. Oh, I gotta, I can you know, hold do you know where the bathroom here. is? Oh, I do. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Run beer. away. Yeah, I'll away. take another beer, too. Oh, here you do. Why, thank you. We might actually do a cut in this episode for the first time ever. Yeah, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a great time to thank our sponsors. I'm going to go down here and try and do this on my own. I feel uh, I feel like I don't have my training wheels anymore That's without the, Evan here. There you go. You're off. You're free range. All right. So first of all, I don't even know why I grabbed the card because it's Chuck Kaminsky, the basement trader himself. Trader, Mr. Chuck. <laughs> yeah. He's bought been, speakers from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought a good amount of things. There's an amp that's kind of propping up the uh, the camera right over there that mm-hmm. I bought from him. Yeah. And numerous other things in here. He's uh, He's got guitars now from, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is Aria or Aria? A-R-I-A? Yeah. I'm not sure either. I just know that uh, the bass player from uh, Duran Duran used one of those basses, but they don't oh. make that model anymore. Uh. But he's able to get those now, and he also has the Nashville Guitar Works, which are mm. like Fender copies, basically, Chinese nice. Fender copies. But he sets them up great. They play fantastic. They're on par with like the higher-end Squires, I would say. Okay. Like, uh, like the, what's the, uh, not the Vintage Modified, but the, uh, oh, I, I forgot know. the series they have. Okay. But. Nice. Quality, quality instruments, great yeah, price. Affordable. Chuck Kaminsky, the basement trader. He's got two reverb shops. Uh, one of them sells instruments. One of them's got like amps and accessories. And its basement is in Bass Guitar, B A S S M E N T T R A D E R, Basement Trader. And we always mention Chuck when we talk about these microphones. He hooked us up with these at the beginning. These are nice. But the table that they're sitting on is care of Mr. Dennis Davis yeah. over here. This is a table from his his uh, from his work that we were able to pick up. I yeah. threw a coat of black paint yeah, on it. I don't remember being black. Yeah, yeah that's we, right. I threw a coat of black paint on this thing, and uh, we put some stickers on it, and we're all good. Look, Evan's back. I have my training wheels again. <laughs> we talked about Basement Trader, but I was also telling people that the table that is holding up these mics we got from Chuck was actually from Dennis. Oh, thanks, Dennis. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Extra stuff, man. Was right. this in my garage for a little bit, too? Um, yeah, you took it for a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know, even know why I grabbed the Basement Trader cards. I, I went through them already, but we can go to Listen CLE if you like. Should we go to them next? Oh, yeah, yeah. If we're doing sponsors, I thought maybe we'd skip it today. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we're there. It's, yeah, we're here. <laughs> we're here already. It's an interesting day. I, I'm, I'm glad we're seeing Dennis again. I feel like it's been a long time it's been since a long I've seen time. You. I've been following you on Facebook, so I'm always going to smile on my face when I see your pictures up there, so. Oh, looks, nice. looks good. Thanks, man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, life's good. Hell yeah. Looks great. Well, that, um, that like, built-in community thing, there were, like, um, people always in the crowd at Disco Inferno shows. That's how it w- was, like, I did about 10 gigs with Carlos Jones and the Plus Band oh, this yeah. summer. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what it was like there. It's really, really cool. Being yeah. Part of that. No backing tracks nice. in uh, in that band, oh, I can tell you already. <laughs> that's <now>. right. <laughs> <laughs> no click tracks, that's nice. Cool, cool. And uh, so I did some, and then the last few, uh, our friend Tyler Ray, who mm-hmm. was uh, one of the early episodes of this podcast, mm-hmm. was filling in on guitar, nice. trying a few people out. Nice. Cool. I'm going to throw in a shout-out to oh, a yeah. listener right here before we get too far in and everybody tunes out. That's a first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... 
Thank you to Kristen, Kristen Horvath. All right, she sent a comment on um, the Jim Miller show that we did, mm -hmm. where I was lamenting at the beginning that they got rid of Jam on to put in the Fish Channel, which they did, but they brought back Jam on, or they moved it now. It's channel oh. 309. It's way down All the right. dial. I don't even think my last vehicle went that high, but my current one does, and now I'm locked on to. I'm locked cool. on to jam on thanks to Kristen Kristen Horvath. So, thanks, Kristen. Thank you so much. So yeah, 309 jam on. Here's some like good new music cool. outside of the Cleveland area. Yeah. Now awesome. where should we go for in the Cleveland area, Evan? In the Cleveland area, you should go to www.listencle.com. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where I was leaning. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our buddy Michael McFarland and Amanda Nix, they put on Listen CLE with mood-based playlists showcasing music by Ohio artists. Yeah. yeah. They have a love channel, a uh, playlist, not channel. They had a nice holiday mix going. Um, they did, yeah. I don't know. It might still be on, but I, I tuned into it and listened to a little bit of that. Cool. Yeah, check our page because we have a link up to that if they still have that going. Yeah. Cool, yeah, so they have a love playlist, groove, energy boost, chill, a feel-good playlist. They have one called Misery Loves Company. They have a rock out, a, nice dri a night's driving, and uh, acoustic cuts. And speaking of the holiday stuff, I went out to the, um, the holiday hangout down in Akron at the Goodyear Theater. My mm -hmm. wife and I went down there. Um, fantastic show. Um, it was, we saw a couple familiar faces that have been on the podcast, mm -hmm. Lava Brothers killing it, Angie Hayes, Ohio Weather Band. Ohio Weather Band, they covered um, the, the Kinks, um, what's their Christmas song? Oh, uh, Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, nailed it. It was, wow. it was awesome. You know, nice. and I, uh, I saw them as I was leaving, they were out in the hallway, and I was like, oh, you guys sounded fantastic. He's like, oh, thanks. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I know you. I've been in your house. <laughs> But great show, and it was like the perfect holiday concert where it was chilly when we went in and we came out, and like the first snowfall was coming down. So yeah, that's, that's it was cool. it was awesome. Definitely, they've been doing that for years now. I think this was like the, I don't know, I don't know what annual one it was, but it was an annual thing that happens on. And uh, yeah, like the shootouts were putting that on. Um, fantastic job. All the bands were uh, yeah, just killer. I, 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 I loved it. Nice. I remember that. That's cool, man. I wish I was there. Yeah, you were sick. Uh, you were mm -hmm. sick that day because uh, we were we were looking at going. Yeah, it was a uh, a rough time uh, right when it started getting cold because we got a kid in kindergarten now. Oh, and nice. So yeah, she's exposed to all these germs that she's not usually exposed to, and yeah. you now she's but she's getting her immunity built up now after yeah. getting sick and sick, and then bringing it home to us. Yeah, you know? help your immunity. Merry Christmas, mom and dad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some snot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to wash my hands, so, yeah, that's uh, good times. We can shout out Jones Drones Cleveland. He had a mm -hmm. great video up of the sunset tonight, because I don't know, like, if you saw it, mm. oh, yeah. man, it was gorgeous. gorgeous. The, drive, yeah. the drive here, I was, uh, the whole time, because I'm, I'm taking 90 West to 271 South, and so when I was taking 90 West was right when it was every single color all yeah. mixed in. I got a picture of it, but the picture is nothing compared to what it actually Yeah, it was, was. gorgeous. I need a better camera. Or <laughs> I thought I had a good camera. I guess it's just... <laughs> yeah, Russell had his, had his drone, up, drone up doing a live shot on uh, Facebook. I was checking out earlier. Wow. It was awesome. Nice. Jones Drones specialize in filming drone fly-through and live events. They also offer drone education of all sorts. The next time you're thinking of a perspective from the sky, think Jones Drones. They will take you to new heights. Jones Drones, CLE. That's right. Make yeah. sure you put that CLE don't, don't in Don't fall there. for the other, mm -hmm. the other Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's the evil Jones. <laughs> we should, we should uh, make a caricature of like the, the other Russell Jones Drones. Yeah. <laughs> I never checked it's out like his website. It's like the Bizarro guy. Yeah. Speaking of, we have a website now. When this comes out, our website will be launched. Did you oh, know that? Oh, yeah. I, I did know that. Somebody told me. Yeah. 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 You, so we have a, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I think it's CuyahogaSound.com. No. <laughs> I don't think I put podcasts in there. I think it's just CuyahogaSound.com. Cuyahoga 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 nice. Oh, Sounds yeah. great for a web developer to be like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, <laughs> you'll find it. But uh, the, the main thing we have on there is you can get links to these podcasts, which if you're already following it, I guess you're all good there. Yeah. 
But we also are keeping a content or a uh, like a concert calendar. Yeah, concert so, calendar. Not just for not just our guests that we've had, but all the yeah. music going around Cleveland. They just uh, posted Hookahville dates. I'm, I might be heading to that. We'll see how quick I get back from Spain. Yeah, that sounds nice. I'm trying to get Rust Belt Ragtops to play on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to Jim Garbaldi. He's the guy's name. He's like he's their manager, and he's he's um, got all the connections for getting booked in these festivals. Is he one of the chocolate oh. guys? Isn't that a kind of chocolate? No, that's Garf, uh, Garfadelli, I think, Gir- or something. Ghirardelli? Ghirardelli. Gir- 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 yeah. Gir- yeah. Yeah. yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <The> Garfield Deli. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, man, they guy. got pastrami. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, um, give a shout-out to Unrefined, unrefinedcle.com. They are a local, healthy, gluten- and dairy-free meal prep service in Cleveland. They'll deliver 35 miles from downtown right to your front door. And they just dropped a new menu you can check out on their website. And a few of the new items are chicken coconut curry, capanelli beef bolognese, and rosemary thyme chicken, and then the apple cinnamon protein pancakes, which I tried over the holidays. That sounds mm-hmm. good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is at uh, my sister's company, actually. Yeah. So oh, she always brings samples whenever there's family oh, yeah. get-togethers. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> good person to know. And if you use the code FIRST20 or CS20, you'll get 20% off your first order. That's unrefinedcle.com, unrefinedls on Instagram. Nice. Yeah. Now back to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Should we go through a history? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Mr. Yeah, Dennis you're in the hot Davis. seat. Now. I see. All right. I got to perform. History of of uh, your your playing. So your dad was mm. your dad played guitar, had oh some awesome instruments. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got so a with bass us, that I'm no, so no, jealous yeah, of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, history. Let's. Uh, I'll talk for a bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I was extremely fortunate to uh, grow up with a dad who played guitar, and um, having done a lot of therapy, I was also either fortunate or unfortunate to be someone who just wanted to be my dad. You know, um, so he played guitar, I played guitar, and it's not like I didn't like guitar. Uh, I love it, but having being 51 and having gone through some therapy and also having gone through his death, you, you learn a lot about how much you're influenced by your parents and how much you're influenced by, um, you know, people that are just bigger than life. You know, um, but yeah. So I was always around guitars. I mean, he. <laughs> if he could have held on to half the crap he had, uh, he he would have made so much money. He had like a, a Rick 12, many Fender Twins. Uh, when he bought his ES 335 and 68, he bought it for 250 bucks, oh, and wow. they had a 12 string version. And he's like, ah, I should have got that too. Um, you know, multiple Fenders and Leslies and all sorts of stuff. So uh, when I came around, you know, he had all this stuff, and I just watched him play, and I would pick it up and put it down a lot. So I'd get frustrated, <clears throat> and um, but he always was super cool. He never pressured me to play. He was just like, all right, well, if you want to, you know, pick it up, that's fine. I'll show you some stuff. But um, so eventually, I kind of got away from guitar, went into drums. So around fifteen, I actually played my first gig with him in Northfield, um, just kind of down the street, Northfield Inn. I think it's it's what it is now. I think yeah, across from MGM, and uh, I was playing drums, and I played a few gigs with him there. And just kind of eventually worked my way back to guitar around 18. And then he and I were in quite a few bands. He he was, if it had strings, he could kind of play it. So he was really good at bass. He never took a bass. He never took a lesson. He learned like a bar chord from a Ventures album. So he saw that. on. A, he went to take lessons. And the guy was like, oh, it's going to take you a long time to learn this. And then he's like, well, I want to learn that now. So he was really <laughs> self-taught. <laughs> um, and he was always in three-piece bands. Not always, but a lot. So he was really good at trying to fill up the gaps, you know. So he, even though he never studied music theory, he understood, like, how to make, you know, if you're on bass, go to this note to make the whole thing a seventh or go up this way to make it a minor. So I learned a little of that from him. But he played everywhere. We used to drive around, and he'd be like, you know, oh, I played there, I played here. Now I do that with my family, you know. Mm -hmm. I played there, I played there. Um, So, yeah, uh, you know, during high school, I was in some metal bands that never did anything, you know, basement stuff. Um, and then, yeah, I got into guitar, and then my dad was trying out for a country band one day, and uh, he had me come down, and I 
you know, just played a little bit with them, and it, it worked out. And so I played with them for a little bit, and then we played in probably two or three other bands after that. Um, and then uh, around 2000, no, probably a little before that, I got in a band called Rock Bottom, which was with a drummer from but the band I was in before, a country band. And we played pretty much like what Bad Juju's doing now, you know, all 90s stuff, except it was during the 90s, yeah. (laughs) So when uh, Be My Girl came out by Jet, it was a brand new song. So we played like Sadie Renee's, and we got to play Rockin' on the River, back when they had like local bands playing Rockin' on the River and not tribute bands. Um, But, you know, it's been guitar for a long time, you know, except for the stint where I did the lead singer stuff under the bridge. Um, It's been nothing but guitar um, you know, I was lucky enough to get into a, a Journey Tribute band around 2009, um, and that was like the first time I ever really traveled, you know, for gigs, which was weird and strange, and, and playing on stages where they provided the sound, uh, which was crazy. And then I met Chuck, you know, a few years after that, which was, yeah. we were in New Jersey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we'd go to New Jersey, and, and the, the lead singer of the band was very unique. Um, unfortunately... If you're gonna go through history, if you've been in bands, you've you've encountered a psychopath, you've encountered a sociopath, or, or an ego that's <laughs> eaten itself. Um, I'm not gonna mention names or nothing, but um, you know, if if you're in bands, you're the the dream is just to play music and have fun, and you think that's all it's gonna be until you're trying to work with people, and then you realize there's a lot more going on in being a band than just playing music and learning it and stuff. So. But anyways, Journey Tribute Band, and then, you know, we did the Southern Rock thing for a while, which was a lot of fun. Always wanted to do, like, a lot of Southern Rock stuff. But that just kind of imploded, and then Chuck and I went off and did our own thing with, like, an 80s tribute, and then I was able to join up with you guys and do a Green Day tribute, and then uh, under, oh, you know, yeah. I always forget about the Green Day oh, part yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually got, like, a Facebook message from somebody asking if we were still doing it. Um, that was a while back. Yeah. And then, um, you well, know, we get your razors out. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you get new clippers for Christmas? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> then, uh, you know. are all coughed up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, and then ZZ Top tribute, we did that for a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was All that fun. chest hair and put mm. it into a beard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> CC Top, right? CC, yeah, yeah. CC Top, yeah. yeah. Um, that's fun. We just learned Fortunate Son with Rust Belt. That's, oh, yeah. that's yeah. a great song. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it, it's been a hell of a ride. I, I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. But now that I'm with Bad Juju, it's weird. I've, I've been in a lot of rock bands, so this feels like the first kind of major rock band. Like, all the, the lore you hear about rock bands, like, you know, there's going to be crazy women and um, all this kind of other things. It, it seems like it's coming true with Juju. Like, I, I've never been the one to chase after women too much or have women even come on to me. But something about the band... I don't know. It's the people there. It must be the people that's in it. But yeah, a lot of that rock and roll stuff is like kind of happening, and it's it's, it's a little that trophy strange. you got. Yeah, yeah it's the yeah. whole award. <laughs> Cleveland Music Award. Exactly. Winner. Yeah, award winner. Getting everything Ding. going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I've never been in a band other than what we were in with playing a character where you know the shirts would come off, or you know it was just kind of hardcore, just passionate rock, which is great. Um, you know, when we. Ch- um, Chuck and I were in the band, you know, with the Southern Rock stuff like that. It was kind of ruled with an iron fist. You did things this way, and we did it this way, and then there was no real room to kind of be yourself. So um, later we were able to do that. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, with Juju, it's just something a little different. It just, I don't know. There's just a different energy, a different vibe, and I, I don't know exactly what it is. But, but yeah, sorry, brief history. It, wor- it works great. You guys are doing fantastic. Um, yeah. You know, you got the usual lineup changes that come and go with – Long running bands, but yeah, you know, I think it's just par for the course, right? I, I think their formula has been, uh, which like some other bands like Billy Likes Soda, is you just you play constantly, you know, which was something mm-hmm. I've never been able to do as a booker for a band is find places where, um, you just play all the time, you know, it just always seems like a struggle. I, I booked Rock Bottom and I booked the stuff, you know, I helped Chuck yeah, book Moon, Moon Man, Man. I, I tried booking Under the Bridge, and I could just never find that formula, but somehow some of these bands they just can do it and they just play all the time so i think that's a big part of it you know you, you increase your bass and you increase the following um again something you don't think about when you're in the room trying to figure out a song but it's all part of the the marketing and the mm-hmm. keeping the, the the gears turning yeah and the gimmicks too like you know g- keeping the crowd yeah. paying attention and, yeah. and engaged yeah. right remember billy like soda used to do a uh something every show where it, um, oh. called pick a uh, pick on the kick, and so every single mm-hmm. every show there'd be a new fan or 
um, with their picture on the bass drum for oh, the whole yeah. show. Yeah, I see Greg <laughs> put that up there, especially during COVID. Man, yeah. Did you do a fill-in show with Billy Like Soda? Uh, I didn't do a show. Uh, they reached out to me uh, like 2020 April and saying, hey, they actually kind of back up. What I, I filled in for Juju before I joined the band. Mm-hmm. And during the weekend, right before COVID shut everything down, we played at the Sand Trap in North Royalton. Uh, it was uh, Otterfest. Tom Otter's a you right. know, local promoter. And all these bands were playing. So I was filling in with Juju, and Billy Like Soda was sponsoring the whole thing. or They had their equipment up there, and Greg saw me. Um, and then he called me. He had heard from someone else that I had been a lead singer. He thought I was a lead singer. And he said, hey, would you like to try it with our band? So I actually auditioned with them and played a, a couple practices, but I eventually just said, I can't do it. You know, They were yeah. doing stuff like Fall Out Boy, and I'm like, I mm-hmm. can't do that night after night. I'm never going to survive <laughs> uh, yeah so <laughs> but it was a, it was a hell of an honor because when we were doing moon man i kind of looked at them having known chris was with them it's sort of like wow they're doing like what i want to do they're playing all these great places and stuff like i don't know how they do it so you yeah, having the opportunity to just kind of you know be with them and, and and try it out was pretty cool absolutely yeah well, it's also when you were talking about working with uh with uh, sociopaths and everything, it's not—it's not all bad. We had some fun with that. Oh, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I make it seem like that was the whole thing. Well, no, like it, even just messing with the sociopaths. Oh was, my, was fun. So we got to—he's mentioned going to New Jersey. <laughs> we went to New Jersey, and uh, the the <laughs> the gentleman that we're talking about was mm-hmm. was glued to um, a lyric monitor. I mean, we've played Sweet Home Alabama every Ooh. single show for the last couple years. But didn't know any of the words of it, so like he was that was his uh, security blanket. Mm-hmm. So we made that trip, and the first thing I did when I got out of that van was I hid that thing, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that lyric and I let everybody else in the band know that I did it, except for him. <laughs> and uh, watching that go down was oh the panic setting. In. Oh, it was it was hilarious. Yeah. We're like, well, you know, it's about twelve hours back. You might be able to make it in time. Yeah. We're not playing until tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, like poking bears is something I I like to do. Because yeah, when you did, it, I was like, no, 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 no. It's like this, this guy's got a hair trigger. <laughs> yeah, he did have a hair trigger. Yeah, yeah he about flipped out on us coming back from Michigan, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we yeah. had a whole band blow up coming back from Michigan, and we had to make a stop in Sandusky, right? And we played uh, a show in Sandusky. Yeah, and it seemed With like the attention. whole. While we were all in in the van yes. together, we all yeah. rode together for this trip, and mm-hmm. yeah, it was uh, <laughs> one yeah. of the most tense car rides I've ever had. <laughs> I've never stared at a holster for like three hours straight. Yeah, before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we could have a whole podcast just on that experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually read a book after uh, we got out of that van about sociopaths, and it, it's it's funny you say psychopath, and it sounds like a killer. It's it, it they're not they don't have to be violent, you know. So. Um, but you know, it's just basically someone who does everything for themselves. They don't care who they hurt or how they do it. They just do it for themselves. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, everything <laughs> I, I was reading was like, oh yeah, this relates to what we experienced, you know? And I, I was with that guy for like seven years, you know, and yeah. Chuck came in there at the last, well, last few years. Uh, but he got his full blow of that as well. <laughs> yeah, I was there for, <laughs> yeah, I was like two, two, maybe three years that I was with you in that. Mm-hmm. And I remember going over your house when, cause we, we didn't play in the winter. That was one of the things. He doesn't go outside in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. during the winter, so I went a over, good side to him. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, during, so during the winter, I went over to Dennis's house to go jam and he's like, listen, um, I'm leaving the band. I'm like, so what band are we doing now? <laughs> because you're out. I, you're was, out. I'm out. Yes. Oh, yeah. There was there was no like question. I wasn't like asking to join whatever he was doing. It was like, <laughs> well, I'm in. So what are we, what are we do? doing? Yeah. <laughs> Did you you know that that Chuck was gonna come with you when you made the decision? Did you have that um, feeling? No. I, I think it was more. I wouldn't have been surprised, but I remember the last gig we did in New Jersey. I think we went down and had a beer, and we were just talking and stuff. And I, I think I remember going home and saying, "Man, if I could only get in a band with Chuck, this would be awesome. This would be, mm-hmm. you know, I think that'd be great." You know, and then we went through and did a bunch of bands. And yeah, we so had a great time cool. too. That New Jersey gig, it was the rest of us in the band went out. You know, Steve, the bass player, who we've been in all these bands with as well. Mm-hmm. We all went out and explored New York City and hung out and had a great time. Oh, in the top of the Empire State well, Building. Yeah, the singer right. stayed back at the hotel room. Yeah. You know. And, oh, it was, it was cool. Yeah. We had an awesome time. Yeah. But, nice. um, yeah, I don't know. It's It's been a ride for sure. And, you know, I, I'm, I feel 
like there's still more to do because I see people like uh, Rick Arendelle, who's not to give out too much information, but he's over 60 and he's the drummer for Best of Times and he's still out doing it and loving it. And Steve Kovacs, who Chuck and I were in a band with, he just joined Juju and, uh, you know, he's, he's a little older than us and he's still at it. So sometimes I feel like there's a shelf life being 51, like, oh, how much longer can I do this? You know, how, how long I can I take my shirt off and be like, what the hell are you doing? But I think there's a lot more that you can do, you know, at, even past 60, uh, which is great because I, I don't really have any plan. I saw a band up at uh, Kelly's Island, and I, I think the guitar player must have been 70, and he's doing it. And I'm like, this is great. You know, I can do this for a lot longer. Yeah. So uh, Mike Bestel. Have you met Mike? No, um, I've heard you talk 65, about him. 65, but yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's retired and everything. He's I think, I think he's over 70 now, but he's out there playing constantly. Yeah. You know, but he was playing... In 1968, you know, yeah. playing originals back in the in the wow, 60s up yeah. in Wisconsin, and mm -hmm. been playing ever since. Now he's got his hair long again he yeah. went from working in universities. Now he's retired and <laughs> oh, rocking great. out, man. And yeah, yeah, he's having a blast with it. It looks like you know, yeah. I I filled in on them uh, on drums with them a couple oh, times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He actually reached out to me about playing bass, um, and. It brings me back to you when you were talking about playing with your dad. I didn't know you played with your dad all those years. Oh, yeah. You know, we've known each other a long time. Yeah, that's, that's funny. And uh, my dad actually reached out to me. He's putting together a project. He reached out to me back when I thought I was – before I had told him that I was moving to Italy. Right. <laughs> like when I, when I had just learned that and I uh, was putting together a band. He's like, you want to play bass for us? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Actually, I'm moving. but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's have something out of it. But I've actually – because we were both like – for so long, both drummers, like, we didn't, oh. you know, never played in anything together. Absolutely. But Yeah. Yeah, you get the opportunity to do it. it yeah, it's pretty, for sure. It's a nice thing to have in your I'll resume. have to do a fill-in or something like that, yeah. yeah. I've never played with my dad, but I've played with my mom. Like, That's we, cool. We did a, a senior center, like, Christmas show. She plays flute. Mm. So her and her friend did, like, harmonizing flutes, and I just uh, did a classical guitar in the background. Oh. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's, that's cool. It's man. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice when you can get family involved and yeah, uh, it's, it's good memories. Me and my sisters sing all the time together nice. too. And yeah. We all, when we were growing up, all of us took piano lessons. I have two older and two younger sisters, and like, oh, wow. starting at five or six, we like that was what you do. You mm -hmm. take piano lessons. Nice. <laughs> and then like choirs and like church choirs and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, family was fun. Yeah, Boy, yeah. Yeah, I got to do that once, at least once for sure. Have you ever played with your dad on stage? No, I've gone oh, wow. up there and sat in for him okay. during his shows. Right. But, like, I mean, I wasn't playing out on bass. I was playing in the house, you know. Now I feel like I've been playing enough. I think actually doing that rock bottom gig, you know, filling in for that one, Mm -hmm. It was one of the best things where it gave me confidence. We're like, all right, I'm good enough to go oh, yeah. play on a stage. Oh, like, yeah. I'm not at the level I'm at with drums, but but, but I can do this. You that's know? right. Yeah, they were super impressed with you. So, yeah, you don't have was, anything to worry about. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, did the same thing. And, you know, like I, I get jitters when I'm playing bass, like mm -hmm. out there doing covers. Like when mm -hmm. I'm doing covers on drums, there's zero jitters anymore. Oh, yeah. I've been doing it since Muscle I was like memory. 13. Right. So. Just, it's like <laughs> clocking yeah. in and clocking out. Yeah. yeah. Each song. Yeah. Exactly. Which it's nice to get the jitters, like to be to doubt myself and be like, it starts on A, right? It's a little <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's yeah, it's fun. I got my little cheat sheet right there, so I'm one of the ones for the uh, anybody playing cover band bingo, like the, the <laughs> iPad on stage. Go ahead and check that box off for me because I do have cheat sheets there to help myself Absolutely. out. Absolutely, you mean a lyric monitor? No way, terrible <laughs> person. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I need it, but it's there as a crutch, like as a, yeah. just like. <laughs> just a confidence booster, you know? Yeah, a lot of people like having crutches, mm -hmm. you know, just in case. You know, yeah. so it's scary being out there by yourself with, with everyone looking at you, thinking you might make a mistake, the, you know? Our <laughs> singer does that in Rust Belt. He, he mm -hmm. doesn't uh, always look at it, but he's he's got an iPad right on his mm -hmm. microphone yeah. stand. Just, just know, with, in case. Yeah, it has every song that we're doing up there, like when it's time, just for that reference. Yeah. My drumming crutch is literally just like, I make sure I have two sticks on the left and two sticks on the right because I throw yeah. sticks in the air all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to be able to, like, if I drop it with the right hand, I can grab it with the right. If I drop it with the left, I can grab it with the left. You ever hit I'm yourself in the head or face during a show? Yes, I have. <laughs> um, those ones aren't too bad. Um, when you catch yourself, like, on the knuckle of oh, the other God. hand. Oh. That's rough. Yes. Like when you hurt, hit yourself in the hand. Or I did a fill in with you guys. Um, it was towards Youngstown. We did that outdoor amphitheater. Mm -hmm. um, that one, I got a doing the twirls with my 
the stick. I hadn't filled. I hadn't been playing all the time, so the calluses were gone. And I oh, burned I a hole that. right there. Yeah. I remember wrapping it in duct tape so that I could keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. It worked. Yeah. So now I bring duct tape to every show. Like I have a, a built up uh, set of things that I bring now for all the shows. You know. Yeah, it's funny road warrior stuff. You know, band aids, yeah. tape. You know. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, yep. athletic tape. I brought around for my fingers, and I've got that uh, glue stuff for the for fingertips for playing bass. Cause other, oh, I've been yeah. playing like crazy since that rock bottom gig. I've been playing bass like every day wow. since. So like, I got the calluses finally built up. Yeah, I need to get my bass back out. That PV I bought from Chuck has been in the case for probably three months. I didn't play it. Yeah, and I need to get back on that. It's I fun. love playing bass. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of, like it's a great way to come up with ideas, and then the guitar kind of like shapes, and you can build a soundscape yeah. off of oh, that yeah. idea. Absolutely. Whenever any time I play bass is at band practice when I just switch with the the bass player. Yeah. We all mm-hmm. switch a lot. And st- oh yeah, sometimes the bass player will give it to the other singer who plays mandolin. He'll play bass, and then the bass mm-hmm. player plays banjo too. Oh jeez. So like, we can we got a bluegrass side to us. <laughs> yeah. <a> lot of fun. <laughs> That's pretty neat. It, yeah, it's neat. <laughs> it, 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 it's like you can take. It's so easy just to take any song, any style, and just like do a bluegrass version. Oh like yeah. You just got to tweak a couple things. Like mm-hmm. all right, this is on this instrument. That's on that instrument. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty fun when you have Led Zeppelin, you know, covers and stuff, uh, bluegrass mm-hmm. style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's a fantastic thing, though, being able to switch instruments with people. Like, that's something that I want to do for doing original stuff is being with people that were like, you play that on this. Like, you wrote it on bass. You play bass on this one. Like, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And yeah. I think, like, mm-hmm. seeing that with, like, watching Get Back and being like, all right, you're the bass player for this yeah, one. I'm yeah. on drum. You know, although Ringo yeah. kind of sat on drums for that whole thing, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, just being able to be flexible and not be so limited in, like, I'm the drummer, I'm the guitar player. You know, just, yeah, especially yeah. if you're multi-instrument, it's you can get stifled. You know, it's nice to, to break out, especially getting out front. You know, you playing bass for a few shows, that's a whole different world than being like a kid. <laughs> it's, it's very different. Yeah. It's very different. It's like I'm able to walk over to you and come back. And, right, I you remember know. you came over, we played Under the Bridge, and like doing the uh, the, the ending, ending is just guitar and bass. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, well, this is pretty cool. Normally I'm just sitting back there waiting. You yeah. know, like, oh, yeah, what's yeah. up next? <laughs> a whole lot of breaks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that is fun. The end of that, I, I remember running over to, to Chris and just like playing that. In his oh face yeah, with him. I yeah. do that all the time now. When I yeah, play song. yeah. same thing. Yeah. yeah, he came running over to me the other day. Uh, Dennis came over and we were we were messing around with these songs for the uh, New Year's Eve show that that we're doing, and uh, he handed me his handed me his guitar to check out. And it's the first time I've done a wireless before. Uh, I never realized how much <laughs> I'm avoiding my stepping on my cable in yeah. my own basement <laughs> until I had a wireless, and I'm like. Wait a second! Like I just kept myself like stopping all the time. I'm like, why am I stopping? Oh, because I'm thinking about stepping on the cord. Yeah, (laughs) it's so nice. I had to go back to a cord the last gig we played, and I was like, this sucks. You know, it's like I'm stepping on it, and it was like nylon, and it was hardwood floor, and you slip in. I'm like, yeah, this has got to go. I can't. Yeah, can't that was like it. a whole new world for me. Like I was like, ooh, I feel yeah. untethered here. I think the first time <laughs> I got a good one was when we were doing the Chili Peppers. I, mm. I got a wireless thing, and then I remember we did a show uh, at, at the showcase in Sandusky or wherever, mm. and I didn't have it. And I pulled the the cord right out of the pedal board, and like it's killed the sound oh, right in the right. intro. You yeah. remember that? I forgot about that. Yeah, right in the intro of the song. I'm like, like what's going on? What's going on? Why did it happen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the cord. It's not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I remember playing a show like years ago at Wits End in Willoughby. And our guitar player had a wireless on, and apparently the guy across the street at the other bar had the oh same wireless on. Wow. So we're like, he's like, he's playing, and he's like looking at his amp, and I'm like, I can hear him playing. So it's like, all right, he's got some noise going on. And then we get done playing, and there's still guitar playing. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, that is like, so and funny. we got done with sets, and he went over and talked to that guy, and like went across the street <laughs> to great. each other. We're like, yeah. <laughs> are you hearing me? We got to change channels, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. All right. Well, we're going to jam when this is all done. So, yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. we should probably rush out of this, huh? Selfishly. I mean, we don't have to rush out, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask if you, do you do original stuff in your own time? Um, do you write a lot? You know, it's it's funny. I don't really write much. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to retire 
recently, and so I, I got some time to write. Wait, I, didn't, I don't think I've even talked to you since you sold your company. But congratulations! Yeah. Oh, on thank that, you, man. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. Um, so I, I have some ideas, and I'm trying to make some time for it. Um, the funny thing is, if if I do uh, edibles like gummies or something mm-hmm. like that, pot gummies, um, oh my god. Boom, boom, boom. It's like fireworks in your head. All these ideas are going off. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Um, so I guess to answer your question, I don't really do a whole lot of originals. I'm looking to do more. Um, but, you know, Juju keeps me pretty busy. And I'm also taking a lot of, uh, now that i got time, guitar, online guitar lessons. So I'm learning, like, a lot of guitar theory and just trying to get better at slide and chicken picking and all these different mm-hmm. things. So, um, yeah, not really a lot of originals. And I, and I s- struggle with originals because I don't know what to do with them when I'm done. You know, if I learn a song and we go out and play it, I have an audience for it. I don't know what to do with original music. So that's a barrier I think I have to blow through, like an artist who doesn't have someone to give their paintings to. Sometimes it's just fun to create, but being someone who's always been driven towards um, an end to what I'm doing, it's a little different mindset to say, I'm going to do this, and it may just end right there, and I never do anything with it. What's your angle? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, are you trying to sell it? Are you trying to do something? You know, and I I have a hard time with that. So it's a learning experience for me. Yeah. No, that's what it is for me, just, like, creating, like, and Mm -hmm. and shelving it. You know, I've got, like, a thousand ideas just there. Like, and if the motivation ever comes to take it seriously – then like well I've got all these books on the shelf to read out of you yeah. know and have yeah. you backed up your looper like uh, can you back uh, you, you have like you, a, ba- you backed it up I, a I couple do. I have years some, ago yeah I've got some of it you I have I, some I, of mine okay. but I think yeah. I have all new loops since then really wow. yeah all right. yeah he's got this uh was it the RC uh, the RC three hundred RC three hundred yeah it's yeah huge. he's you know had, I remember I first bought that during the Chili Peppers oh yeah thing. I remember you brought yeah. it down uh, I was trying to like incorporate into like some of the snow. two two guitar yeah songs snow or, oh yeah I could never get snow I had to end up. I'd end up using my fingers, and then I still couldn't get it up to speed. Oh, and that, so I, I can play it now, though. Nice. Yeah, you were always like, am I there yet? Am I there yet? Five, five years old. Old. Bad hey, can, we, can we play at, like, 80% speed? And mm-hmm. and then um, I remember seeing a video. It was, like, toward, towards the end of our, uh, us playing, and they were playing it, like, at 80% speed oh. at, like, a big festival. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, he, so did – he just like snort some cocaine and then do it in, w- in a couple <laughs> takes in the studio, or <laughs> yeah, did he like play it, it and then they speed it up and like because because be now good. that they're performing it, he they're playing it slower, right? Like I don't know. Isn't it but, great seeing your idols humanized like yeah. that? Yeah. Like uh-huh. yeah, when they go half step on something, mm-hmm. cause they can't hit the notes. That's yeah, great. like yeah. or yeah, you, or you see you know just something like you know bottom. Missing a spot, you're like, oh, thank God! Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> human being. that's the exact human... same place I fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, he's having a difficult time. He did it, but he's having a tough time. Oh yeah, <laughs> I remember uh, Robert Plant was on Howard Stern, and he was talking about, um, oh shoot, what song was? Many times I've cried, do 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 do. Uh, over the hills and far away. Yes, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, early in the day I couldn't hit that note. Six o'clock at night I hit the note. You know, so like even at that level of Led Zeppelin. They're not always on. They're not always able to do all that stuff. Yeah. And maybe they do it once, and they captured it, and he's never able to do it again. It's Yeah, you get the yeah. magic of it. But Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. This is like my second <laughs> podcast, and uh, definitely this is great sitting down with you guys. I haven't yeah. seen you, Evan, in so long. I know. It's and, like it's going to be mm-hmm. weird talking to Dennis just like in a <laughs> podcast format instead of just sitting yeah, in a bar somewhere. Yeah, a couple somewhere. times I yeah. kind of, oh, wait, there's a microphone here. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. It's <laughs> so what do you guys got coming up big? I know you went through it at the beginning, but go ahead and go through again. Um, stuff well, when's we, when are we airing? Uh, this will probably be on Sunday. I might put it up Saturday so that people will come actually see us on there Saturday night. Right. So I'll put this up Saturday. So oh, it's yeah. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Ooh, it's a special. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, New Year's Eve special. <laughs> Special. <laughs> so if you're not uh, busy, come to my corner bar in Parma. I'll be there. Chuck will be there filling on base. Uh, great I'm still bar. trying to figure out what I'm doing New Year's Eve. So it's kind of a drive, though. I'm going to be drunk. So, yeah. so <laughs> oh, continue, I, continue. I dig it. No. Um, you know, uh, the next Friday, January 6th, we're at the Time Warp. Um, and then I can't remember everything else, but we have a few shows. If you go to uh, Facebook, Bad Juju CLE, that's where all our events are. Just look at our events page. Um, but yeah, February third. That's our Lorian Palace gig. That's uh, I think ten dollars at the door. Two bands, Alt ninety five. They're friends of us. Former drummer Brad Ruff is 
uh, in that band. So they open up, and then we come out and do a full blown show, hour and a half. Uh, should be a great time and real true concert experience. Palace Theater is beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a great, great venue. But yeah, just busy, busy. You know, catch us over the summer. We're gonna be at Rock on the River, Warren Amphitheater, uh, probably Lock Through Pizza Fest. So cool. busy. Just oh. a few more questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your go-to guitars? We didn't really touch on gear. Oh, my. So, dude, he's got a new just, boy just I checked qu- out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't bring it, but I, I brought my other one. Uh, I've really started favoring PRS. Uh, I have a CE24 that I brought for a jam. Uh, I just bought a, I can't remember the guy's name, Dorn, Darren Warren, maybe, DW? But it's a PRS CE24 with a Floyd on it, but it's a little bit wider neck, very fast guitar. But... Um, I was lucky enough to have a, a dad who really appreciates. So I grew up on Gibsons. Um, so my dad bought a Les Paul Gibson from Henry's Music in Barberton, which is ninety one uh, for eight hundred bucks. <laughs> Imagine that with a case, <laughs> you know, a custom. So I played that through country bands and nineties bands and Journey bands and everything. So I've been a big Gibson guy for a very I've long seen time. That everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, yeah. So, um, but you know, Les Paul's super heavy. So I'm starting to go more towards the PRSs. Cool. Yeah. Paul Reed Smith, for those who don't know who PRS is. <laughs> and moved away from amps. Yes. Recently. That's been a huge deal. Um, when I was in the Journey stuff, you know, it was half stack, pedal board, you know, tube screamer and stuff. And then I got into 11 rack when we started doing the Southern Rock stuff. Um, but now I'm a, a Kemper profile guy. I was able to take a Mesa Boogie amp I had and profile it, and that's my clean sound. And um, it's really amazing. I mean, not only just the profiler from Kemper, but a Helix or um, what's 11 Rack have? I think just 11 Rack. I can't Do remember they have that. another one? They have something else. There's the, uh, was it the Quartz? Is that the new yeah. thing that's out? Yeah, I don't know if that's 11 Rack, but yeah. So these modeling things are really incredible. And to all my guitar players out there, no one knows the difference between a tube amp and a profiler. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's re- I understand that the, the want for equipment like that and, and pedals. I was a big pedal guy for a long time. But it is just incredible what Kemper has done with capture. And you can go on this forum and download anything you want. You know, you like Diesel, you like Hughes Kettner, you like all this stuff. And it's there. And the best thing is it never changes. You never get a dirty pot. You never get a a shorted cord. Uh, You can store it and put it on Dropbox or keep it on a flash drive. And then if you're, you know, someone steals your stuff, put it back in. I just bought another Kemper. And I just took it from my old one, downloaded the new one, boom all ready to go so it, it's yeah. it's pricey but um as far as longevity it's really amazing i feel like i have my tones now forever yeah. and that's it's really nice to roll into a place and never have to worry about it. the tubes starting to get a little old um you know you know is there a battery in a pedal that's weird all that stuff so yeah I've, I've been a user of that for over a year now and it's just been incredible i have to try that out it's yeah. great i brought it so you can try it <laughs> <laughs> i just had my pedal board almost destroyed yeah so uh, i'm looking to try something new i was going to add some new pedals but maybe maybe that's the answer like give it give it a new try the the problem with that is you lose the flexibility you know you only get what they offer so if they have a certain number of flangers that's all you get you can't really pull like chuck just built a pedal board there's no keely to pull from there's no boss you know so you lose a little bit of the experimentation but if you're more just a straight-ahead player, and you're like, look, I just need something that sounds close. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's just nice. their their effects. Yeah, it's stuff that they have okay. programmed. Same thing with Eleven Rack and Helix. They have their yeah. own models. Okay. Nice thing about like I thought like the way you could choose amps and brands, you could choose pedals. No. Not not for it's, Kemper. It's like a limited no. library. Yeah, they have a lot of stuff, but they don't have everything. And then the other like for doing something like Bad Juju, where you're like. I need this machine head sound for the first song of every gig and you step on that button and you have it tweaked from at home and it's perfect. Like Mm -hmm. you can't beat it. The only time where it falls short for me, because I have the helix is just when you're like, I'm going to hit an E chord and just mess with the knobs on this delay (laughs) is like, there's an extra layer. You can get there and you you tap the button and then it recognizes that you tapped it, but you didn't Mm -hmm. push it. And then it brings it up on the screen, and then the knobs change into things. Whereas, yeah. like on a pedal board, you just grab your oh, delay. You I think that's the only thing that was ever knobs. holding me back from trying something like that is losing the um, like you improvise your tones. You, you lose that. Yeah. You do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I love having that. Having yeah. both is 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 probably the ideal way to go. Like if you're recreating a sound, Helix, uh, Kemper, you know, Eleven mm-hmm. Rack. 
fantastic for that. Yeah. Um, but when you're just making some crazy sounds, like I just bought some pedals and the uh, the Keeley Dark Side. I am mm-hmm. loving that thing. You'll have to try it out later. It's, yeah, I'm going to try uh, it out in about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fantastic where you're like, you know, like this side is like a phase in a univibe and this side is a flange. And you just mm-hmm. blend the two different pedals together. It, it's it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, cool. It's Absolutely. pretty cool stuff. Well, let's get to it. What's well, your what's the, your movie recommendation? Yeah, <laughs> movie, movie, uh, TV show, or YouTube channel. All right, uh, movie. Is that like Netflix documentary type that stuff? That works. Okay, uh, I just started watching um, a Netflix documentary called High Score, and it's all about the rise of home video games from like Atari to Nintendo, and it's. Having grown up through all that is pretty amazing to find out like where Space Invaders came from and how the guy developed the guy who developed Pac Man was just eating a pizza one day and he took a slice and looked down and then that's how Pac Man was born. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> they named uh, the Kirby character. Nintendo named that after a guy who was a lawyer that defended them against Universal Studios who was suing them because they thought Donkey Kong looked too much like King Kong. So they named the Kirby character after him. So learn all that stuff. That's really cool. That's what I've named my new vehicle is Kirby. Kirby? Kirby, fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, TV show. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're all right with that one. But, yeah, I watched that as well. That's that's a very cool, yeah. That's amazing where this – I love that stuff, like where this stuff came from. Like I watched uh, something about World War II and the reason the Blitzkrieg – you know, the Germans did Blitzkrieg so well is they were all amped up on methamphetamine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so they, they they were like, these are superhumans. Well, no, they're all drug addicts, you know. So, <laughs> um, so the TV show, uh, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but the first season of Dexter is probably one of the best things I've ever watched for TV. Um, have you seen, like, the reboot of it? I haven't seen it. I, I feel bad either. that I haven't. If yeah. I had Showtime, I would have watched it by now. But yeah, I never watched the last season of Dexter. Yeah. yeah, it was <laughs> it was nice to wrap it up, but yeah, uh, you probably didn't miss much. Well, I remember I, it's been maybe ten years or not, maybe not that long, but I remember mm-hmm. the end of season seven pissed me off so much that I didn't want to watch. <laughs> Sometimes it. you get that oh, point. Uh, yeah, this bullshit. <laughs> um, you two, okay. Yeah. Well, it was just like one of them. Like, uh, mm-hmm. um, what are you watching right now? Actually, you talked about some. Uh, you mentioned the art market in in part of this, and I it maybe. Uh, think of a video I watched uh, actually earlier today. It's the art market is a scam and rich people run it. <laughs> it was uh, it was a YouTube video from Wendover Productions. And yeah, uh, Dennis explains that at the end of that one Sunny episode. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> does. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, oh, and yeah, always check out the Always Sunny podcast. And with mm-hmm. Danny DeVito on... I mean, that was a great. That one. was fantastic, uh, man. Danny DeVito's story of going from like a hairdresser yeah. <laughs> to a movie star is. I ridiculous. thought he was joking. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely check out yeah. the Always Sunny podcast. But the, uh, the 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 video that I watched on the art market basically like there's five big galleries in the world mm. that make artists you know to make an artist like, right as they get featured at one of these, and then there's two auction houses, and basically like. You kind of have to kiss the ass of one of these places in order to get your art out there and be worth anything. And then the rich people buy all of your art, and then they'll overpay when another piece of it comes out so that it raises the value of the 100 other pieces they have back at home. Uh, so if they pay, overpay by $2 million or whatever on this, all the other paintings they have at home just went up by $2 million. Wow. And then wow. they're all like, so the, the auction houses are getting a commission on you buying these paintings. You're paying them a commission because you just bought this stuff. So, you know, you're their buddy. And the only places that appraise these paintings are these auction houses. So, like, when you're like, you know what, I'm going to donate one of these to the art museum. Can you appraise this for me? And they're like, yeah, it's worth $100 billion, even though it totally isn't. So then you're like... You know, hey, Mr. IRS agent, I just donated a hundred oh, billion my. dollar painting over here. So I, you guys owe me a lot of money in tax. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything break. in taxes this year, <laughs> and it wow. just continues like that. So if you can't get into one of these uh, top five galleries to get the start, to have people then buy all your stuff, and then yeah, like money laundering and tax evasion and oh, all kinds yeah. of stuff, it was pretty interesting. Wow, so. and frustrating. Yeah, and frustrating. Yeah. yeah, you need the billions to get in there to get that painting in order to, and everybody else is just screwed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Go enjoy the Cleveland Art Museum. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun place. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, I just watched the Glass Onion 
Uh, that was pretty I cool. That I watched that yep. too. That was great. Good. Nice little murder mystery update. Yeah. Like these times. You know? mm-hmm. It was nice to watch just a regular movie, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Like I yeah, thought it yeah. was. It was yeah. interesting the way, yeah, it kind of got back and it yeah. twisted around. And Daniel Craig held his accent better than in the first one, which was pretty cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a great oh, one. Oh, that's a series that. of movies? Uh, yeah, they had one. I don't know what the first one was. I think Jamie Lee Curtis was in it, but I saw that in the theaters. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that, I'll that go check that out I didn't even know that. Yeah. I just, like, just was um, told about it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was fun. Edward Norton's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, yeah he had for a big sure. part in that, yeah. yeah. Cool. Nice. And I'm finishing Game of Thrones. I'm on the last, second to last episode. Oh. Right now. Hey, hey, second to yeah. last episode? All right. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. disappointing ending. <laughs> Just a uh, bit. Oh, I'm I thought so. It ended. Um, I think the whole oh. last season was kind of disappointing. Yeah, I've, that is so hard to nail that. A, a, a beautiful, unbelievable series. And, you, and how are you going to wrap it up? It's like, uh, shit, you know, how am I going to do this? I thought that um, zombie battle went over pretty well, oh. actually. It, a lot of people said it was too dark. Yeah, the uh, I thought it was amazing too. The new like series dark. is yeah. <laughs> had, had a lot very dark going on. You know, like visually. No, the dark. new series is a prequel to that, right? Yes, the House yes. of Dragon. One. House yeah. of Dragon. I haven't seen that, but it's supposed to be huge. There's a kick-ass Fender like House of Dragons guitar series really? that they put out from the custom shop. I, don't I saw one of them when I was in New York. They had it. I went to Sam Ash and they had it hanging up on the wall. There it was. 24 grand. Oh my <laughs> god. For House of Dragons <laughs> Dragon <laughs> <laughs> I just have to have a dragon on it. I was like, oh, all right. You guys ready to play some music? I am ready. ready. All, right. all right. Well, let's just cut it off then, like a diseased hand. For Cuyahoga Sound Podcast, I'm Evan Stone. I'm Chuck Schilling. Thanks, Dennis Davis. Thanks, Evan. Peace. Thanks, Peace. Thank you. Peace.